this church. It's so wonderful to see your smiling faces out there. Everybody, you should smile now. If you will, please turn to hymn number 518, Shall We Gather at the River? In G, boys, in G. We'll start this beautiful day that the Lord has made for us.
Lord, we come to you this morning with grateful hearts for so many blessings and asking you, Lord, that you might continue to watch over us and guide us. We pray, Father, for the many that are sick. You know the needs and you are able to supply those needs. And we'd ask you, Lord, that you would deal with them according to your abundant mercy and wisdom. We pray, Father, that be thy will that you might raise them up. We pray, Father, for the women that are traveling and out of the service this morning, we'd ask, Lord, that you watch over them and keep them safe. We pray, Father, for those that are suffering from loss and fires and floods and storms and other tragedies. We pray, Father, that they might look to you for the comfort and the strength they need to sustain them in these hours of trouble. We thank you, Lord, that we have you that we can turn to in our time of need. I pray, Father, for each one here. I pray, Lord, that you would seek the need to have in their life. And, Lord, that you would supply that need according to your abundant mercy. I pray, Father, for our church, that you would help us to be a light, that you would help us to reach out and touch those around us with your love. I pray, Father, for our country. I pray, Father, that you would bless America, that you would help us to return to you and be the nation that we need to be. I pray, Father, for the peace of Jerusalem. I ask you, Lord, that your world will be done in that area. Guide us now, Lord, through the remainder of this service. Help us, Lord, to do the things pleasing in your sight. And, Lord, forgive us our weaknesses, our faults, our failures. Help us to do thy will, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hey, that's kind of weak. Good, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. That sounds a lot better. You know, we got to say this loud enough so they can hear us up in seven. Anyway, I want to welcome everybody. Everybody's home, folks. No visitors today. Boy, it's good seeing Dorothy back again. I know she had to be, she probably still does, but she's back in church. We love you. Yeah. Y'all yeah. uh, gonna like this weather we're gonna have? No. It's gonna be in the hundreds this week. No. Oh, yes. Just my type of weather. So anyway, uh, listen, if y'all have some songs you want us to sing, you gotta tell Edna or Dorothy, and uh, they'll write it down in this little book here and we'll sing it. So uh, that's that. And in Sunday school, we had 15. Yay. So, uh, and we had tacos. This no, we, yeah, we did. We had tacos this morning. Coffee. We didn't have no donuts, but that's okay. We had tacos, so. And, and if you come early enough, you can have good stuff like that. So, uh, we have our board of concern. And Libby is still not doing good. We just need to keep continuing to say prayers for her. So uh, she's such a sweet lady, and we just miss her in church. So uh, she's on the board. So all, all of those people on the board are up there for a reason, uh, maybe sickness, maybe something else. So we just continue to pray for her. So uh, it's Wednesday at 6.30 is prayer service and Bible study. And then this evening at 6.30 is uh, the evening service at 6.30. So, is, hey, is anybody, oh, before I forget, Friday. What is Friday? Is 16? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's a ladies' luncheon. So, yeah, we're going to go to Bill Miller's on Roosevelt and Military Drive. So, ladies, we'll be there at 11 o'clock. So, good morning, Pete. So, so, anyway, that's this Friday, so ladies, don't forget. <coughs> Okay, uh, anybody having a birthday? Getting any? Miss Kathy says we have to do a do over, so all of you people that stood up here last Sunday, come back up. Come on, Sheree. Oh, and by James. the way, I'm going to tell off on myself. I'm a bad mother. Yes, my daughter had a birthday yesterday, and I forgot. I forgot. Her brother remembered, but Mama forgot. Yes.
have any words of wisdom? I know Miss Barbara does. <laughs> I'm a good talker, aren't I? Yes, ma'am. Jesus is good every day. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Anybody the camera lady went Sunday? to sleep last Sunday. Anybody Sorry. Anniversaries? <laughs> Bubba and Dorsey. And, and you and Bill. Okay, just Amen. Amen.
pray, Lord, that this one here that doesn't know you, Lord, that today is the day to give their life to you. As we take up the tithes and offerings, that you bless those who can give, bless those who can. Let us remember, Lord, it's just a small portion of what you've given us. And we thank you for being our Lord and Savior. And I ask all these things in the blessed and precious holy name. Lord Jesus, Father God. Amen. Amen.
Good morning. Good morning.
in the eyes of all that were in the congregation were upon him. And he began to say unto them, Today is this scripture fulfilled in your eyes. Jesus came to set us at liberty. He came to set us free. You notice there he said he came to uh, preach the gospel to the poor. Well, the gospel, we're all poor. Without the gospel, we're, no matter how much we have of material things, we don't have anything. And we need to realize that without Jesus, you are a pauper. Uh, if you don't have him, you're spiritually bankrupt, broke, destitute. You don't have anything to look forward to. But this is what Jesus came for, to preach the gospel of good news of salvation to all that will listen. Not everybody's going to listen. Not everybody's going to accept the word. But Jesus came that we might have life and that we might have it or abundantly, he said. We came, he came to deliver these things. And he, he uh, says, uh, preach the gospel. Uh, he sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Uh, if your heart is aching today for some loss, and there are a lot of people that have lost loved ones, or lost things of value, earthly value, we need to realize that those that are in the Lord, when they go out of this world, they are not lost. They are forever saved if they have Christ. They are secure. We need to grieve for our loss, but we need to rejoice for their gain because God has given to them through Christ forgiveness of sin, and he gives that to us also. Each one of us that is a child of Christ, I know, I know Christ as our Savior, have accepted Him. We don't have to worry about leaving this whole world because we're going to a better one. We've got something better ahead of us. And He said to preach deliverance to the captives. Captives. Set at liberty. Now, this is what I want to talk about is liberty. You see, every one of us is or was a captive of sin. We were all bound and separated from God because we have sin in our lives. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So every one of us were bound by Satan. Every one of us was separated from God. Every one of us was or are lost. It depends on what you've done with Jesus. <clears throat> so he says he come to set them at liberty, to set us free, to break the chains. You see, when Christ died on the cross of Calvary, he broke the chains of captivity. He set us free if we want to be free. We can hold on to those chains if we want to. That's our privilege. You can stay lost, perish, or you can receive Christ and be saved. It's, it's your choice. It's your option. Each one of us is given the free will to choose what we will do with the gift of salvation that God has extended to us. You see, we can't earn it. We haven't done a thing to be worthy of salvation. We haven't done a thing to be uh, fit to enter into the kingdom of God. I, just like everybody else, was living for the world and with the world and in the world without God. No hope until Christ came into my life and he did the same for you. He came to me when I was worthless. And he says, I love you. 
I gave my life for you on the cross of Calvary. I'll forgive your sins and I'll give you a home eternal in the heavens if you'll accept it. You're free from the bonds of captivity. You don't have to fear the devil. You don't have to fear sin. You don't have to fear death because Christ has conquered all of these things for us. He has set us at liberty. And he said that <coughs> and he said at liberty them that are bruised. <coughs> to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The acceptable year. When is it acceptable? Any time you are willing to turn your life over to him, he will accept you. As long as we are in the flesh and walking around and able to make decisions, we have the option of choosing life or death. We can choose Christ or we can choose to reject Christ, to turn away from God, and to go our own way. But you need to know that every decision we make has a consequence. If you decide you don't want to serve Jesus, you will face the consequences that come, and that is eternal separation from God. And if you choose that you want Jesus as your Savior and you accept Him into your life, the consequence of that is eternal life. It's forgiveness of sin. <coughs> I have received forgiveness of sin because I have trusted Jesus. I have cast it all the burden upon Him. I can't save myself. You can't save yourself. You can't forgive yourself. You can't do away with the sin that you committed. But Christ can and will if you'll let Him. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to have everlasting life. He wants you to have something to look forward to. Romans chapter 6 Got several verses I want to read here. Starting at 16, Romans chapter 6. Verse 16 says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to do, to obey his servant ye are, to whom you obey, whether it be unto be sin unto death, or obedience unto righteousness. You know, I said. Every one of us is serving either God or the devil. There's no straddling to this. You can't have the best of both worlds. You can't have it one way one day and another way the next. You can't live for the world and die for the Lord. You can't do that. You have to make a choice. You have to choose. So if you yield yourself, in other words, if we let ourselves go, if we give ourselves over to do it the things of the world, live it for the world, live it for the pleasures and the things of the world, we are going to die spiritually. But if we will turn away from these things and yield ourselves to Christ to strive to obey His will, we won't be perfect. We will be saved because of His righteousness. But God be Thank that ye were the servants of sin, but you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine, doctrine which was delivered in you. He's talking to this Christian to probe. He says, You obeyed from the heart. Uh, you are, were the servants of sin. We all were. Uh, and, but now you are the obedient to the Lord and you are serving the Lord. Being then made free from sin. You became the servants of righteousness. You see, we have to remember that we are going to have to work for somebody. It just happened that way. And we can either work 
for the devil or we can work for the Lord. And it's our choice. But it says that we were made free from sin when we accepted Christ. We don't have to do the will of the devil anymore. We don't have to live for the world anymore. We can live for the Lord. <laughs> Skipping down to verse 20. He says, But when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. As long as you serve the devil, you don't have any righteousness in you. You can't have it. But the 21st says, What fruit had ye then in the things wherever ye were now ashamed? Are now ashamed? For the end of those things is dead. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, uh, we can be in bondage to sin or we can be set free from the bodies of sin. It is our decision. We have to make that choice. Have you made that choice? Have you determined that you're not going to serve sin anymore and you're going to start serving the Lord? Have you acknowledged that you are guilty before God? You have to do that. You need to acknowledge that you are guilty before God. You are already condemned. He looked upon you and he saw sin in your, in your person. And he says, I can't receive you. But I said, Jesus, that if you will receive him, he'll cleanse you of all that unrighteousness. You have to make that choice or you will perish. It's just that simple. We think that uh, God gave us the right to make a choice. I'm glad that God gave me that privilege. That he didn't just program me to be saved or lost. He programmed me to make a decision, either for him or against him. And I chose Jesus. How about you? Have you chosen Jesus? Have you chosen life or death? I don't know. I pray that you have chosen life, that you have received Christ as your Savior, that you know him and, and his, his righteousness. Looking over into Galatians, uh, the fifth chapter, we're going to read one verse. The first verse. Fifth chapter of says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty for with Christ has made us free, and be not ensnared again with the yoke of bondage. He says, Once you have received Christ, you don't go back to doing the things you were doing before. You're a changed person. He says, You have a new life, a new purpose, a new goal. And you don't do the things you did before. You are living for Christ now that you're a Christian. You're not living for the world. There are too many Christians, I think, that don't realize that they need to change their lifestyle. That they need to change from what they have been doing and start doing the will of God. They need to put the things of the world aside. If you will look, I know, we live in the world, and if you're a lost person and been living in the world all your life, there are so many things that seem right. Everybody does them, so they must be right. But if you'll search the scriptures and seek God's will in your life, He will show you the things that are wrong in your life, and you can put them out of your life. And that's what you need to do. You're not made perfect when you receive Christ. You're forgiven. But then you need to grow in Christ. You need to learn God's will in your life. You need to learn what is right and what is wrong. You need to seek His will in your life. Uh, too many Christians are not growing. They're still child. Children. They're still babes in the woods. They have Christ, but they don't have the fullness that comes of knowing Him and His righteousness. We need to know His righteousness. We need to live for Him daily. We need to accept Him as our life. John 
the eighth chapter, I find it here right quick. 